Okay, so we will look today at a few ways we can bridge virtual and hardware. In my case, I will use VCVREC, um, but of course this can work with other software as well, like Reactor, Ableton, and so on. We will start with MIDI, later on we will look at other options as well. Here I have the 1U Micro MIDI module from Intelligel. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not available anymore, but there's a different version of it, and there are many similar modules out there. Basically, this module will convert the MIDI signal coming out of VCVREC into control voltage we can use in our system. In VCVREC, I have the beautiful IONS sequencer that we will use, um, for example, to sequence the Basimilus. Now, this we will do with the CV to mo uh, MIDI module in VCVREC. This will convert the virtual control voltage from VCV into MIDI. This will go to the micro MIDI module. From there, it will be converted to control voltage and will sequence the Basimilus. So let's start with the pitch information. I have here a quantizer I'm using. Let's just send its output to the volt per octave input of the CV to MIDI module. I will use also the gate. Already you can see that we have some movement here on the MIDI module. And let's use this with the Basimilus. So first of all, I will use the pitch. Here is the pitch output. This will go to the pitch input of the Basimilus. And now we have two options. We have the gate output or the trigger output. In the case of the Basimilus, we can use triggers. So let's use the trigger output to trigger it. Already we get sound, we get a sequence. Now the Basimilus is going through the mimeophone, let's bring it in. And now what we can do, we can use the clock from VCV to sync the mimeophone. So let's send the clock, or I will send the clock, to the clock input of the CV to MIDI module. You can see it's coming out of the MIDI, of the micro MIDI module here. So we'll just take it and send it to the uh, clock input of the mimeophone and let's do something like this. Yeah. Very nice. Now here we have also the mod wheel output for example that we can use so uh, IONS has another sequence that I can use to, for example, let's send it to the module input. I can use this, for example, to sequence the decay time of the Basimilus. So we can send not only pitch and triggers or gates, we can also send modulation. In the case of the micro MIDI module, there is also velocity output. It can be used for all sorts of things, not just velocity. There is a CC output, a reset run, a clock division. Um, again, other C uh, MIDI to CV modules might have other features. Um, but let's talk a bit about the pros and cons of using such a module. So first of all, you can see how easy it is. It's basically plug and play. Um, you will see on, you will see later on that uh, um, with CV, with sending CV, um, there's a need for calibration and such. With MIDI, it's super easy. You just plug it and it's going. Um, another good thing is that usually MIDI to CV modules are quite affordable. Many are also available as DIY kits. Most of them will not take a lot of space in your case as well, which is also a good thing. On the other side, um, it is MIDI after all, so the resolution is limited to 128 steps. So this is not so good. Another thing is latency, um, and this may vary from system to system depending on your setup, buffer size, and so on. But latency is a thing you will have to deal with, so bear this in mind, especially if you are creating bit-driven driven music. Another downside is also that you cannot send audio through MIDI, so you will need another solution for this, sending audio from and to VCVREC or Ableton or whatever you're using. 
So this is another sound, uh, downside. Now, another thing I will mention is that if you don't want to buy a MIDI to CV module or you want to see if this is something for you without making the investment, you can use any MIDI controller or synthesizer that has MIDI in and CV out. So for example, I have here the Keystep Pro um, that you can use, of course, it has MIDI inputs and CV outputs, lots of CV outputs, so you can use it as a MIDI to CV converter when it's not so dirty, <laughs> as a MIDI to CV converter. This will work also with the, this will work also with the Keystep, the Beatstep Pro, even with the Microfreak, with the Mini Bro 2, 2S, never mind, it has MIDI in and CV out, so you can use it to convert MIDI into CV. Um, I have a video all about it, how to use a MIDI controller as a MIDI to CV converter. There will be a link in the description if you are interested. For now, let's have a look at how we can achieve the other way around, sending CV from your system into the computer. So here I have the Befaco VCMC, which will convert control voltage into MIDI that we can use in VCV rack. Again, in my case, I'm using VCV rack. There's also a smaller version without the faders. And I have a full video about the VCMC and VCV rack. If you are interested, links in the description. But let's have a look at a few examples. I have here a flute texture on Morphogen. And something I really like doing is sending the end of splice and the CV output, the envelope follower output into VCV rack to generate another sequence connected, related to what's playing on the Morphogen. So in VCV rack I have a um, pellet, which is based on mutable instrument splats. And I'm using the MIDI module, so I the MIDI to gate and the MIDI to CC to convert the MIDI coming from the VCMC, uh, VCMC into virtual control voltage. So let's use the envelope follower from the Morphogen. I will send it to the VCMC CV input. Um, and I will use also the trigger outputs, the end of splice to the gate input. And we have a sequence going again, it's related to what's going on the morphogen. Now we can also use, for example, the MOOC slicer also from Befaco to sequence another voice in VCV. I have here um, a wavetable voice from Veli in VCV, like a wavetable voice. Let's use the all gates output from the MOOC slicer to trigger it. And I will use the common CV output to change or control its pitch. And now I can trigger a one-shot sequence. And we have another sequence in VCV. I can change, of course, the steps here. Another interesting thing we can do is use the end of cycle output from the MOOC slicer to bring in a delay in VCV rack when the sequence is over, when the cycle is over. So let's do this, let's send the end of cycle output to another channel on the VCMC. Again, I have it already uh, set up in VCV rack, so let's trigger another one-shot sequence. We can use all sorts of different CV sources in our case to control and change things in VCV rack. Again, this will work with other software as well. Now also here we are dealing with MIDI, so the resolution is limited to 128 steps. Also here we will have to deal with latency and we cannot use it also for audio to send audio. But also here there's no need for calibration. There's a bit of menu diving in this case, but not so much. Again, if you are interested, there will be a link in the description to a full video I made about it and VCV rack. Um, but now let's move on to sending CV without the need uh, of MIDI.
So here I have the ES9 from Expert Slippers. Now this is probably, um, in my opinion at least, the best solution for having a hybrid setup. It's not perfect, but it's super, super useful. Now there's also the ES8, which is quite similar, but has um, less inputs and outputs. Um, it's cheaper though. And both the ES8 and the ES9 are audio interfaces by themselves. And they are DC coupled interfaces, so it's possible to it's possible to send audio and CV both ways. Um, I have the ES9, so I will concentrate on it. And also here, um, I made an in-depth video of the ES9 together with VCVREC. Links in the description. Um, but let's have a look at a few examples. I have here in VCV. I hope you can see this with the other camera. A sequence going. I have pitch information and triggers um, that we will use to sequence again the Basimulus and I have them coming out of the outputs here. So here we have the triggers, for example. I hope you can see this is blinking. So let's start with the triggers. Opalach, I will just take a right cable and this will be the triggers to trigger the Basimulus. Already we have it. I have the Basimulus going through a Chronoblog 2, a delay in VCV rec, by the way. Okay, let's also use the pitch. Need another cable. The pitch is coming out of output 2 in this case. Again, if you are interested, there's a video all about the ES9 and VCV. This will be the pitch. Now, already I can tell you that this is not a sequence. And that's what I meant by the uh, need to calibrate the voices, to calibrate the voltage. I'm using here this uh, orange module. It's the official expert sleepers calibration module, um, silent way. Um, so let's use it. The audio will go first to the calibration module. Just like this. And then the pitch will come from the sequencer. And instead of sending the pitch to the basimulus, to the uh, directly to the from the sequencer directly to the basimulus, sorry, it will go from this um, silent way module. And now all we need to do is hit start calibration. It will start working. And now we have the correct sequence coming from VCV rec. So this is now the sequence that I have set in VCV rec, um, thanks to the calibration. The CV coming out of the ES9 is calibrated, and it's in the correct range, and we have the correct, or the Basimulus will play the sequence correctly, or the correct sequence. <laughs> So this is the sequence. Now in VCV rec I also have sample and hold. I'm going to two more outputs here on the ES9 that we can use, for example, to modulate the decay of the Basimulus. So let's use this to modulate the decay. Let's take it all the way down. And maybe also the attack. So we'll take the attack all the way up and it will modulate it will modulate it down. Right, so it's possible to send sequences and modulation from VCV rec into our system. It's also possible to send audio, of course, we will see this soon enough. But there is a need for calibration with sequences, something that we didn't have with MIDI, as we've seen before. With MIDI, it was just plug and play. Here, we, there is a need to calibrate the voltage. Now, the other way around is also possible. Um, so, um, in VCV rec, I have a clock coming out of here that we will use to drive the voltage block. Um, let's see if that's enough. Let's try this, okay. Right, so now the clock from VCV rec is driving the voltage block and let's send the first sequence to sequence a voice in VCV rec. Um, I have here plets and here there is no need for calibration because we just use a quantizer for example in VCV. So I have input 13 on the ES9 
um, set to work with DC signals, which means with sequences, for example. So let's see if I have a long enough cable for this. Yeah, this will make it. Sequence 1 will go to input 13. And now I'm sending the sequence from the voltage block into VCV rack to sequence plets. And we can send the audio, we can send plets into Magneto, for example, so it will come out of VCV rack from this output here. And let's send this to Magneto and raise the level. So we have plates sequenced by the voltage block and processed by Magneto. So you can see we can send also audio both ways. The Basimilus and Magneto are going into VCV and plates is coming out of VCV. Now, as I mentioned before, this is not a perfect solution, first of all. Um, also here, you will have to deal with latency smaller than uh, MIDI or shorter than MIDI, but it's still there and might cause an issue depending on your setup. Of course, there are ways around it by adding delay to the other voices. Um, and I know that in Ableton, for example, there's a special tool for dealing with latency. Um, another con is that ES, the ES9 is quite expensive and it's quite power hungry as well. So you will need to calculate if you have enough power for it um, at all in your, in your case. Another thing um, that you will have to deal with is calibration, as we've seen. Um, this might be an issue, especially if you're in the zone and have to stop for calibration and troubleshooting. I stay away from uh, sequencing things in my system from VCV rack, not only because of calibration, uh, but mostly because of, calibra of the calibration process. But again, you have everything you need right here in your case. You have modulation, you have sequencing, you have sending audio both ways, processing things in your system from VCV, processing things in VCV from your system. Other than the sequencing part, it's quite simple to use. You just send the signals and they are there. And again, in my opinion, it's probably the best solution for building a hybrid setup. Um, as I mentioned before, there's also the ES8, and if you want to try a different direction, there's also the ES3 and ES6 combo. I have them here, the ES3 and ES6. As you can see, they are connected with a cable. With the ES3, you can send up to eight signals from VCV into your case. With the ES6, you can send up to six signals into VCV rack. Um, now they are connected through ADAT, optical cable so you will need added in and out in and out on your interface on your audio interface and um, but that's also a nice solution and not as expensive okay so if you have a disting mark 3 mark 4 or the new one even there are two algorithms that will allow you to use your audio interface no need for a dc coupled interface in this case and send cv both ways from your system into VCV rack or Ableton or whatever, and from your computer into your system. For example, here I have the voltage block sequencing the Basimilus, which is going through Freak, a stereo low pass filter in this case, and it's going also to the Mimeophone. Let's have a listen to it. Now I have two LFOs coming out of um, VCV rack, going through the AC and coder modules in VCV. You can see the orange ones. They are again official from Expert Slippers. From there, this is going to my interface, my audio interface, and to the disting, those two black cables here. And the disting will decode the signals, which means that now we have those LFOs that we can use. I have them going to the CV inputs of both channels on the Freak. So this will be the left channel. This will be the right channel. Right, so we can send modulation and sequences out of VCV to the case. And again, this will work the other way around as well. So sending signals from your case into VCV, there's another algorithm 
the next one that will allow you to do this, to send signals from your system into your computer, into VCV or Ableton or whatever, using a normal audio interface with the help of the disting. I will put a link um, in the description to videos from expert sleepers about how to set everything up. Um, so this is great if you have already a disting and if you want to experiment with sending signals back and forth. Now, keep in mind, this needs to be set up, which might kill the buzz, so to speak, if you are in the zone. <laughs> and also in the case of the disting Mark IV and Mark III, there are only two inputs and outputs. Um, another thing to keep in mind, um, you will need to send the signals to and from your interface, which might mean having long enough cables or moving the interface closer to your system. But then again, if you already have this thing or thinking of buying one, this can be quite useful. So there is something I wanted to mention about the ES9 before we continue with the Moto interface and that is the fact that again the ES9 is an audio interface by itself so you might have issues using it together with other interfaces um, I'm on Windows and that's not possible so I cannot use the ES9 together with the Moto interface in the same software again in my case VCV Rack there's a chance that this will work on a Mac um, and if I understood it correctly, in the next version of VCV Rack, it will be possible to use multiple audio interfaces. So this will not be an issue anymore. So now let's have a look at using a DC coupled interface like I have here, uh, the Motu Ultralight Mark IV. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not available anymore, but there are many others to choose from. And as far as I know, most of them only have DC coupled outputs. So keep this in mind. Now, what is DC coupled anyway? So basically, DC signals are direct signals, um, constant signals, something like pitch information. It will not alternate, but rather jump from one value to another or even stay static. Um, also, slow moving signals like LFOs, for example, are considered DC signals and normal audio interfaces have a built in filter that will filter out those frequencies, those signals. And that's where the need for DC coupled interfaces comes from. So the DC signals like pitch information could go through and we will see later what happens when we use DC signals with the AC coupled inputs of the interface. Um, by the way, there are also AC and DC coupled modules like various mixers that will sometimes be only AC coupled and will filter out modulation and pitch information. Um, but let's have a look now at a few examples. I have a sequence here in VCV Rec and I want to sequence the TSL from Instruo. So the sequence is already going to my interface. You can see it here. This is the yellow cable. And now something that you will need is a special cable called a floating uh, ring cable. I have it here. This one here you can see. I hope you can see this. Let's see. It has one tip is just one stripe, whatever it's called. Sorry that I don't know the, <laughs> the name. Um, and the other, the one that goes to your interface has two stripes. And I believe the ring is missing something like this. So this is a special cable I got from Expert Slippers and they make those cables and they will keep your interface safe and which is quite important I guess. So let's send the sequence. I have here one, two, three, four. This is the in output here. So I will send the sequence to the one volt per octave of the TSL. Again, I'm using this special cable just going from my interface directly to the oscillator and let's have a listen to this I have it going to a filter and some reverb but you can hear that it sounds weird and that's because also here there's a need for calibration so I have here the calibration module ready again from expert slippers I use the official one and I have it already calibrated just so we don't have to go through this process. So I'm just making the connection. You can see now it started working. And now if we have a listen. We have the sequence correctly 
or Calibrated coming out of VCVREC and sequencing the TSL. And again, this is happening through the Motu interface, not through the ES9, through the Motu. The ES9 I'm just using for audio in this case. But it's coming out with this special floating ring cable coming out to the volt per octave of the oscillator with calibration and it works pretty well. Now again, this can also work with modulation. So I have here an LFO and um, let's send this LFO connected. It's already going to my interface, but let's connect it to um, modulate the cutoff point of this filter. So I have another one of those cables, again, floating ring. One is just a tip. Ah, I think I remember the names. <laughs> just One is just a tip. And the other one is the tip and the sleeve. And the ring is missing. So this is a T and this is a TS without the R, I believe. Nice, I remembered. Okay, so this will go to the other output here. And this will go to the filter. Directly from the interface. And we have the LFO from VCV rack modulating modulating the filter. Which is quite quite cool. Um, so as you can see. If you have a DC couple interface, you can send sequences, you can send modulation. Maybe you already have a DC couple interface and you don't know, check it out. Um, now the cons here are that you will need special cables, again the floating ring cables. Um, also it might be a bit annoying having to connect all the time cables from your interface. I mean if it's not close like this to your system. You have to look always which input is what what output and you know it can be a bit annoying um, and again there's a need for calibration when it comes to sequencing pitch which can also be a bit of a buzz killer. So now let's have a look at using the AC coupled inputs of the interface. I have on the scope a sequence coming from the voltage block and this is supposed to be a stepped sequence or so jumping from one value to another but as you can see the sequence is being filtered and that's where we get this smoother signal from the interface will filter out the lower frequencies the slower frequencies so to speak and what we get is a smoother signal and um, I can demonstrate this with another sequence I, I have here in VCV so this will be this sequence here it goes once directly to the scope from this switch here and we get a stepped sequence. This uh, um, um, was supposed to come also from the voltage block just like this, a stepped sequence. But if I run it first through a DC blocker that I have here, again it will filter out the lower frequencies. We will get again a smoother signal just like we saw before. So again, this is coming now from this sequencer in VCV, going through a DC blocker, it will block out, filter out the DC signals. Just like it happens with an uh, AC coupled connections. So this is what we get. So it's not like we cannot send sequences at all with AC coupled interfaces, but they will just be transformed into something else and maybe be unusable or you can still use them for other things. Now what about um, modulation? So I have here the TSL um, in LFO mode going to another input of my interface. Again it's an AC coupled input and it will look like this. Let's take the rate a bit up. And you can see that at higher frequencies, this is now at uh, quite high frequencies, the, signals, the signal is going through perfectly. This is a sine wave that I'm sending and it's, it really is a sine wave also here on the scope. But the more we lower the frequency, the more it will be filtered out and attenuated. So I'm starting to take the frequency here down and adjusting the scope just so we can see what's going on. And you can see that the more I go down, the more attenuated the signal is. And soon enough, it will hardly go up and down. You can see already here, 
because it's a low frequency and it's being filtered out, you can see that we hardly get any signal anymore. So the more the, lo the lower the frequency, the less signal we get, again with an AC coupled connection. Now what about clock signals? So I will switch here from a sine wave to a square wave. You can see again I have a high frequency here on the TSL. Um, and this is a pulse wave which can be of course used also as a clock. Um, and again at higher frequencies we have a pulse wave. The more I will go down in frequency the smoother the signal will be. So I start taking the oscillator down and adjusting the scope. Already here you can see we have something different. I go down and down and down. Look at the signal, what's going on here. As you can see, we get again a slewed signal, a smoother signal. And it's not a pulse wave anymore. But there is something to notice here when it comes to clocks or pulse waves. As you can see, we still get a rising edge which means that we can still use this signal to drive sequencers, for example, or sync other modules, even with AC coupled connections. So if I take the clock out of the sequencer I have here in VCV, and instead I'm using this signal, you can see that the sequencer is still with each rising edge above zero volts. This is how this sequencer is working. It will still move forward if I raise the frequency a bit. You can see I'm driving the sequencer with the pulse, with the pulse wave, the pulse output of the TSL. So what I'm trying to say basically is that there is a chance you can send clock signals back and forth even without a DC coupled interface. You can sync your system to VCVREC or the other way around. Um, there's also a chance you can get away with sending modulation if it's not uh, too low frequency. Um, just make sure to use the right cable so you don't damage anything. And that was it. I hope you found this video useful. Please, uh, please like, subscribe and share. And cheers.